I'm Jess. And I'm Claudia. Uh, we are agronomists here at Farm Agronomy and Resource Management, so FARM for short. Uh, we help our clients with day-to-day -day agronomic decisions as well as um, big picture management strategies to help improve their soil and plant health. And our ultimate goal is to restore the natural cycle and hopefully reduce reliance on chemicals and synthetic fertilisers. And while we do that, we aim to build the ecosystem and improve profitability. And that's why our business motto is make sustainable profitable. Farm Agronomy is based on our boss, Ian Moss's property, Alaringa which is 240 acres outside of Pittsworth. And Mossy has a Dorper breeding herd and he sells grass-fed fat lambs locally. For the last several years, Mossy has been planting multi-species mixes into his established pasture paddocks. And he's been doing that to improve the quality and quantity of his pastures for the herd. So one of the practices that we encourage our clients to take up is increasing diversity in their systems. Uh, if we look at the words mono means one, whereas multi is many. So to translate that, multi-species is putting many varieties into what they're growing. So you can incorporate multi-species into both a cropping scenario as well as like here at Mossy's Farm, a grazing scenario. Some of the benefits of multi-species forage crops are that we find, well, we see we get better weight gains and better feed efficiency per kilogram of dry matter produced. We also find we get much better animal health. So livestock nutrition is not just about the protein, the energy, or even the macro or micronutrients. It's about getting a vast array of phytochemicals and secondary compounds that all contribute to animal health in significant ways. So if we can provide the stock with a diverse range of species, they can actually self-select based on what they need, which is really interesting. And there's research out saying that they can do that both therapeutically and prophylactically. Looking more on the, the soil and plant health as well, having that variety of root structures um, can help a lot with the nutrient cycling. So the different roots are able to access different nutrients at different depths throughout the soil. Um, and then they can bring that back up toward the surface for the other plants to be able to access as well. So that point also helps reduce our weed pressure, reducing our herbicide usage and improving our soil biology. Multi-species forages are also a great way of filling in feed gaps. So for example, you can select species that persist over winter or even hang on into spring and it's a way of improving the quality and quantity of feed during those periods when often our pastures are not as good a quality. So basically, if we've got better weight gains and feed efficiency and improved animal health, that's directly linked to increased profitability. So we like to include a range of plant families, species and varieties in our multi-species mixes. Here at Alaringa, we've recently planted a 15-way multi-species forage that was planted in autumn, so it's been used for grazing over the winter. The first family we included were grasses and cereals, and the species we had in there were cereal rye, we had forage oats, forage wheat, uh, triticale and ryegrass. And some of the benefits of including the cereals and grasses are that they provide the bulk of the feed. So they're often the greatest proportion that we include in our mixes. They've got good fibrous root systems for stabilising soil as well. The second family we like to include in multi-species mixes are legumes. And in this mix we had vetch, we had field peas, lucerne and medic. And the benefits of including legumes are that they're very good nitrogen fixes. They form really good associations with the biology. So they stimulate biology in the soil, which is great. They provide a good food source. So they're high quality feed for stock and high in protein as well, which is excellent for stock health. And they also release acidic exudates out of their root systems, which solubilizes phosphorus. 
and that increases the availability of phosphorus for the other plants in the mix as well. The third family we like to include are brassicas and in this mix we've got tillage radish and a mammoth purple top turnip. They've got really good deep tap roots, so they're excellent for going down through the soil profile into the subsoils. They can access moisture and nutrients from further down and even improve the nutrient cycling, so bringing nutrients back up. Uh, a lot of the yellow flowering brassicas actually accumulate sulphur, so they can bring sulphur back up from down in the profile and then make it available to plants in later seasons, which is really good. And they're great for stock health as well. Sometimes you'll actually see that they've ripped the whole tuber out of the ground and eaten the root system and left the green leaves. So it's amazing what they'll eat. Another one of the families in their multi-species mix here at Alaringa is in the kinopod, so it's the red chard. Um, so those ones are a calcium accumulator as well as stimulating some other types of biology. There's also a couple from the sunflower family. So we had some safflower and some chicory. So in the sunflower family, they can be really good mycorrhizae fungi hosts, which is uh, one of the most important um, fungi that we tend to focus on. Um, the chicory also has uh, research showing that it has benefits with helping reduce worm loads in stock. Ideally, if you could start with say, even five varieties in a mix, ideally you would have at least one from those different families that we spoke about before. So the grasses, the legumes, brassicas, a kinopod and something from the sunflower family, that would be ideal. But sometimes accessibility to seed plays a role in it as well, as well as the budget. Uh, sometimes we do notice that when we increase diversity, we do seem to have an increase in the dollar per hectare. Uh, so this kind of brings it back again to any diversity is better than none. So the best way to get the most out of your multi-species forage is to be really clear on the outcome. So know what you're trying to achieve and then pick the species you want based on that. So for example, if you're just wanting to grow as much biomass as possible, Fix nitrogen, for example, you want to go legume heavy. If you're wanting to grow forage for sheep versus cattle versus any other type of livestock, that will impact the species that you will select. You also need to be really conscious of your environment and your soil type. So make sure that you're picking species that you know will grow in your area. Management practices are another big factor as well. So consider if you want it to be an annual or a perennial, how you're going to terminate it. Are you grazing it, cutting it for hay? when and what to plant and all those sorts of things you need to consider as well to make sure you're getting a good bang for your buck. And then finally, grazing management is a huge thing. So you really need to make sure that you're grazing it appropriately. If you're wanting it to regrow next season or maintain good cover over the summer season as well, you need to uh, yes, be mindful of your stocking rate and carrying capacity. So we've seen firsthand some of our clients have had exceptional results since they've started introducing multi-species forages into their enterprises. A client out west has been comparing a straight monoculture oats to a multi-species forage and they've consistently been seeing better weight gains coming from the mix, even though they seem to um, visually be getting better biomass from their monoculture. I've had some clients report that they've never seen so many beneficial insects, which is really exciting. They said you have to be there to believe it, but there's just millions buzzing around. And uh, interestingly, that's brought in a lot of different bird species as well. So it's contributing to the whole ecosystem. The best way to find out what will work best on your property is just to give something a go. It doesn't matter where you start, but just start with something. So pick a paddock or an area of a paddock and just start a trial. Ask around. You might be surprised who in your area is trying something as well and you might be able to learn off each other. And talk to agronomists like us or other agronomists that might have experience putting together multi-species mixes as well for your area. 
and do your research. So there's plenty of resources available online, YouTube, field days, all sorts of things out there now. So just make sure you look into it. So nature isn't designed to be a monoculture. We just find that any diversity and you know the greatest mix of plants and animals you can have, the system just seems to function better on every level.